This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Shalom. All praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Alright, so this lesson is entitled Christians Only Love the Word. Uh, Salakia, Christians Only Love the Lord in tongue but not in deed and in truth. Okay, it's basically the precept I just read. Okay, Christians only love the Lord in word and in tongue but not in deed and in truth okay and this was inspired by an encounter I had with some family members over the past week went back east to visit and um, you know of course they are devout Christians according to them right in word but not in deed because they still celebrate Christmas, they celebrate Thanksgiving, right? They celebrate birthdays, they eat pork like you wouldn't believe, uh, you know, eat crab, lobster, shellfish, just everything that the typical Christians tend to do, you know, in spite of the fact that they, they call themselves Christians. They are believers in the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son according to doctrines of men not according to how the Heavenly Father wants to be worshipped okay and that's very important and it just goes to show you that our people you Israelites who call yourselves Christians who are following Esau Edom's doctrine basically you know you do have a zeal for the Heavenly Father okay but not according to knowledge and that is going to be a problem especially now more than ever since we are fastly approaching the days of Jacob's trouble okay see the, uh, the Heavenly Father is making sure that his gospel is known throughout the four corners of the earth so when the time comes for judgment you can't say I didn't know I didn't know what was written in the scriptures I didn't know that this was part of the gospel the Heavenly Father is going to hold you responsible for it, okay? And I don't care how much love you proclaim to have for the Heavenly Father, how much zeal for the Lord you have. The Heavenly Father is going to hold you responsible. He's going to judge you for your knowledge deficits, okay? So you don't have to be deficit in the knowledge of the Holy uh, uh, Salakia. You don't have to be deficient in the knowledge of the Holy Scriptures because He sent His 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 prophets, okay, teachers, pastors, to break down the understanding of the Holy Scriptures in these last days especially, okay, because, see, contrary to popular belief, the doctrine itself, and that's based on the Scriptures, is your bridge to your salvation. Now, that encompasses, you know, establishing your faith and belief in Yahweh and His only begotten Son, Okay, you have to believe that he is. You have to believe that his son, the intercessor, Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, is our chief priest, our high, our high priest, Salakia. Okay, and no man gets to the Heavenly Father without the Son. Okay, now it starts with knowing the correct names, Yahweh, which literally means he exists or he is. And his only begotten son's name, Yahawashai, which means literally he delivers his people. Okay? So you Christians are way off in that you don't even have the right name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, let alone not knowing the scriptures. So how in the hell do you think you're going to be saved when you have these knowledge deficits? Okay? Let's read this again. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In other words, 
Don't pr practice what you preach. Don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. Okay? Because the action of love supersedes the words of you loving me or your proclamation that you love me. Okay? You can tell me you love me a billion times. But show me contrary through your deeds that you hate me. By sleeping with my wife. By stealing from me. By coveting what I have. My possessions. Right? By bearing false witness against me. Okay, all the while in the same breath telling me, hey brother, I love you. Okay, that's not adding up. So, like I said, the action of love supersedes the word. Uh, you could say you love me until you're blue in the face as long as it, it um, correlates with you showing me the action that you love me. It's all good. Okay, it's all good. The Heavenly Father is going to be pleased with you. Okay. And let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 13, or Salakia, chapter 10, verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Okay, and this is very powerful. Alright, this is a very powerful precept because people seem to think their belief in the Lord alone is going to get them saved. And this, is, this holds true amongst you Christians, primarily. And even you Israelites that know you're Israelites, that proclaim that you're in the truth, but you want to still, you know, mesh Christianity with elements of the truth. If you are infusing Christianity in your, your doctrine, then you have a knowledge deficit. Okay? You are deficient in knowledge and the Heavenly Father is going to judge you for it. Because he said that the, the Israelites that had no guile found in them were the ones that were going to be delivered okay and and guile simply means deception okay whether you're aware of it or not okay he's gonna hold you responsible for those knowledge deficits like I said okay and this is written you just read it and this describes Christians primarily alright you Negroes Latinos and Native Americans even you Edomites and you other nations but Apostle Paul's referring to Israelites here, right? How do we know? Well, let's jump up to the previous verse, verse 1. Brethren, and he only addresses Israelites, blood Israelites, his people, as brethren. No spiritual Israelites. There's no such thing according to the scriptures. Okay, so we know this is not talking about, Paul's not praying uh, for heathens, non-Israelites. My heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh. For who? Israel. Is that they might be saved. Why is Apostle Paul, okay, who supposedly, according to you Christians, an apostle for the heathens or the Gentiles, okay, because there's two types of Gentiles according to the scriptures. As it relates to salvation, it's talking about Israelites, okay. He's literally praying to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to save his people, the Israelites, okay. But he's acknowledged what? For I bear them record that they, he's documenting this, or he's seen proof of it, that they have zeal of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, but not according to knowledge. Like I said, that's a huge problem. Okay? That knowledge deficit is going to get you judged and destroyed during Jacob's trouble. Okay? For they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. And how are they ignorant of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai's righteousness? They don't know the scriptures, okay? And when you bring it out to them and you tell them, hey, you shouldn't be eating pork because it's a it's a transgression of the law. It's a sin, right? And they tell you, no, nah, man, no, the Lord, he did away with uh, the laws, statutes and commandments with the crucifixion of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, okay? Well, that is, is proof, right? That's evidence that you're ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness, okay? Because what? And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? So we clearly see amongst you Christians that you establish your own righteousness by following the doctrines of men. And we'll get that in the next precept. Okay? You think by doing what you think, what your heart's telling you to do according to Christianity, right? Commandments of men. 
that you are in good graces with the Heavenly Father. Nothing can be further from the truth, man. Okay, that's why it's so important to take heed to what's written in the scriptures, right? Okay, when you establish your own righteousness, you are not submitting yourselves to the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. Okay, for Hamashiach is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And this is talking about everyone that believeth of the Israelites, the elect of the nation of Israel. Because we know the wicked two-thirds aren't going to believe, right? And this doesn't mean that the law was terminated, okay? This means that the law was fulfilled in that Yahushai fulfilled certain prophecies, okay? But he said he's come to fulfill all of the law. So there are prophecies that have not yet been fulfilled, okay? He kept the law, statutes, and commandments himself, and he was perfect in keeping the law, okay? And that was to illustrate, or that was to present himself as a perfect sacrifice to the Heavenly Father, okay? So his sacrifice to Yahweh was uh, sufficient, okay? It was perfect, 100% perfect, okay? Let's go to the book of... Uh, Let's go to the book of, what did I say I was going to get next? Oh, let's go to the book of uh, Mark, chapter 7, verse 7. Because the Heavenly Father is very particular about how he wants to be worshipped. And, of course, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, are one. Not literally one, but on one accord. Okay? You're not going to have one contradicting the other. All right? What what sense would that make? You know, Yahweh telling you the law endureth forever. And then Yahweh Shai coming along saying, Okay, I did away with the laws after I was crucified. No, no. No, Yahweh Shai kept the law. Okay? At any rate, this is the book of Mark chapter 7 verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of Yahweh, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Fool, well, ye reject the commandment of Yahweh, that ye may keep your own tradition. And you see that with Christians, you Israelite Christians. Because like I said, you heathens, it doesn't matter. You can worship how you want to worship, and you're still not going to be saved, because you are not the chosen seed. Okay, so let's go to this. Let's let's go to um, the New Living Translation because sometimes provide a better understanding of these scriptures. Some of these scriptures in the King James Version can be confusing. All right, one day some Pharisees and teachers of religious law arrived from Jerusalem to see Hamashiach Yahushai. They noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the. Jewish, which means Israelite, this shouldn't read Jewish, or if you want to, if you're referring to the Jews in particular, you should say Judites, okay, not Jewish, there's no such thing as a Jewish person in the scriptures, these devils inserted this fool, uh, foolishness to give validity to the, the Ish people, okay, which we know they're a colossal fraud, but that's another story, I digress, all right, Let's see. His disciples failed to follow the ish ritual of hand washing before eating. The Jews, especially the Pharisees, do not eat until they have poured water over their cupped hands as required by their ancient traditions. Similarly, they don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water. This is but one of many traditions they have clung to, such as their ceremonial washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Okay? Now, this is a tradition of Israelites, okay, because we know that uh, a good number of the Pharisees and, and the, the, the scribes, the Pharisees and, and Sadducees were married to traditions, and they didn't acknowledge the divinity of Yahushai. They didn't acknowledge him as the son, the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father, okay, our high priest, okay, through which salvation comes. Alright, 
So the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law asked him, Yahweh Shai, why don't your disciples follow age-old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony. Yahweh Shai replied, You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Okay, and again, this is clearly demonstrated amongst you Christians. You tell you, you say how much how much love for the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son you have, but yet, according to your deeds, your minds, the heart is the mind in, in uh, Paleo Hebrew, all right, your your mind is far from the Heavenly Father, okay, by way of the scriptures. Okay, you just you you dismiss the Holy Scriptures. Because you think your doctrine is pure. You think your doctrine of men, okay, supersedes what's written in the Bible, right? Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. It's okay to eat pork. It's okay to eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. You can celebrate Christmas. You can celebrate Halloween, okay? I even heard that these evil, wicked Christians are coming up with Ouija boards to be able to commune with Yahweh Shai. How wicked is that? Okay? It sounds good. Okay? Who, who doesn't want to commune with Yahweh Shai? Okay? But, you know, obviously that's a, that's a, a vehicle or a uh, mechanism of the wicked. Okay? We're supposed to communicate through prayer with the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay? He is the intercessor. So, how do we communicate or commune with the Heavenly Father? Okay, we say in Yahweh Shai's holy name. Because nobody gets to the Heavenly Father but by the Son. Okay, that's very, very important to note. First and foremost, you have to know the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Otherwise, you're praying to some random God named God. You're praying to some God named Jesus. Okay, which isn't biblical, even though they print that in the Holy Scriptures. And that's part of the deception, okay, that's been pulled over the eyes of you Israelites, okay? You know, in the entire world, actually, all right? Because Yahweh Shai is known, more, he's more widely known by Jesus Christ than Yahweh Shai. Nobody believes his name is Yahweh Shai, but the, uh, the remnant, okay, the chosen of the Heavenly Father. All right, the elect, we know those names have power. We know, we know that those names are the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son through faith. Okay, and that was prophesied to happen. Okay, so let's see, verse 8. For you ignore Yahweh's law and substitute your own tradition. Okay, as I said, this is what you see amongst you Christians. I mean, I'm sitting there amongst my family, and as I'm getting ready to leave, you know, they're preparing pork chops to take to Pastor Pork Chop. So, you know, they have some type of get together on a weekly basis or monthly basis. I can't remember exactly. But, of course, it, it all revolves around food, even abominable food, okay? They always love to commune and. You know, talk about the Lord, but at the same time, in the same wicked breath, you know, talk about, uh, you know, it's okay to eat abominable foods. It's okay to celebrate Christmas, all right? I mean, these people are all bugged out, man. They don't even realize it. When you try to bring this to their attention, they curse you out. Well, not necessarily curse you out, but they, you know, they express their disdain with your belief, okay, according to the scriptures. All right, these people demonize and vilify us as the wicked, okay? Because we're telling them, hey, you're going off, all right? See, Esau, Edom's gospel has been established with, you know, 100% credibility, okay? So much so that people don't even open up their Bible. They are so fervently believing in Esau, Edom's doctrine, okay, of white Jesus, that they refuse to open up the Bible and, and prove or even disprove anything that they believe in their doctrine. Okay? And it just goes to show you how gone and lost our people are. Our people are still slaves. Okay? 
They're slaves because they don't want to be freed from their slavery. Okay? They don't want to be woken up. All right? To the truth of the Holy Scriptures. They are more comfortable with the lies of Christianity. Okay? Because it allows them to continue doing all manners of wickedness. Okay? And that's the bottom line. Okay? See, nobody wants to, you know, open up the Bible and say, you know what? Well, these brothers are right. And it's not about us being able to prove that we're right. You know, it's about you getting your spiritual house in order so you can be saved when, you know, the Lord comes to uh, judge this place. Okay? I want to be on the side of judgment where I get saved. I get delivered from this, this wickedness that's about to befall this earth. Okay? But you know what? It's okay because, you know, I'm not going to concern myself about the salvation of my family members. I still pray for mercy, but I'm getting to the point now. I'm not even praying to the Heavenly Father to show them mercy because they're just willfully ignorant. They're prideful. They're arrogant. And they don't care. They think that I'm a bug out because I believe what I believe. Right? The media reinforces that, that, you know, us, we Israelites, okay, are, are wicked. We're evil, we're hateful, and we want to incite violence to come against our enemy. And that's not the case. That is not the case at all. We're waiting for our Lord, our Savior, to come and exact revenge and judgment on our enemies. Okay? And that's where faith comes in. That's what it's all about. Okay? Faith and belief in the Holy Scriptures that the Heavenly Father is going to send His only begotten Son to judge this place, redeem His elect, okay, and brutally punish our, our enemies starting with Esau, Edom and then the rest of those heathen nations that came against us and oppressing us okay let's read this one more time these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me their worship is a farce for they teach man made ideas as commands from Yahweh for you ignore Yahweh's laws and substitute your own tradition now see the family, my family members, the one in particular, told me that I was just cherry picking. Every time I brought up scriptures, you know, she would say, oh, you're just cherry picking or you're taking things out of context. I don't care what's written in the Bible. They're not going to believe it if it's coming from us. Okay, they are not going to believe any kernel of truth that's coming from us. They're going to just say, they're going to dismiss it as us misinterpreting the Bible, us using it, you know, to... To uh, uh, substantiate our doctrine, okay? But the scriptures speak for themselves, all right? This is not of our doing. This is spiritual completely. And this just this goes to show you that the Heavenly Father is not dealing with these wicked Christian Israelites, okay? Point blank, period. Let's go to the um, the book of uh, Romans. It's a lot yet. Let's go to the book of uh, John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So a Christian would tell you that the laws, statutes, and commandments are done away with. When this New Testament book clearly says that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Okay? Because they serve a purpose. They make us holy. They keep us righteous. Alright? They separate us from all the evil and the wicked, okay, that's taking place in this world. This is why the Heavenly Father called us the light okay light on the hill okay and that light that's actually shining through us is Yahweh shot okay because this is not of our doing this is spiritual 100% we are quickened by the word all right the spirit okay for who whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith and yeah, that word even means indeed our faith Okay, this is how we're going to overcome the wickedness of this world, right? Establishing, establishing our belief and faith in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, right? And following these commandments of the Heavenly Father, okay? He's not telling us to do this for no reason. This is going to separate us. This is going to make us righteous, okay? Now it says our righteousness are as filthy rags, but the Heavenly Father judges, okay, by intent, all right? Do you intend to try to be righteous? Do you intend to abstain from all appearances of evil and wickedness? Okay? And he's going to look and say, well, yeah, 
Okay? The members of the hopeful elect are doing exactly that. And this is why I'm going to deliver them when my son comes to deliver them. Okay? But everybody else, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be punished. You're going to be destroyed. Point blank period. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 8. And it reads, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. And again, right? How do we measure the love for one another? By action, okay? And that's illustrated how? For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. You're not going to sleep or commit adultery with another man's wife. You're not going to steal from him. You're not going to covet from him. You're not going to feed him pork chops, okay? You're not going to feed him crab, shrimp, and lobster, okay? Because those are abominable foods. You're going to tell him, hey, man, no, abstain from that, okay? Those animals are off limits. They're not food. They're not sources of food for us, okay? That's what the Heavenly Father's looking at, right? For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, but the laws are done away with. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, and there is, okay, 613 altogether, including the ones in other parts of the uh, Holy Scriptures, such as accepting, you know, the Karagma, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, that thing that they're going to implant under our skin to enable us to buy and sell if we have it, right? The elect's not going to, to take that. We're not going to accept that. We're going to rely on the Heavenly Father to deliver us through this. Okay, so we can be sustained through faith, okay, in the Heavenly Father. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. You have to demonstrate it by following the law, statutes, and commandments. So basically, in a nutshell, all right, the fulfilling of the law, or salakia, showing love, is based on the laws, statutes, and commandments. Point blank period. So how in the hell are the laws, statutes, and commandments done away with? Right? See, this is the understanding that the Christians lacked. Okay? And this is why every last one of them, if they don't repent and come to the understanding that they're Israelites and the Lord wants to be worshipped a particular way, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed. Okay? That's the bottom line. All right, and I'm going to read. I'm going to read uh, verse 11 here, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. Okay, if you're still following Christianity, you are still sleeping. You are spiritually dead for all intents and purposes. For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Okay, y'all need to wake up. Wake up. Out of this slumber, this Christian slumber that's going to be, okay, instrumental in your death and destruction if you continue in it. Alright? This is a false religion. Okay. Now, another thing that my, my uh, family member said to me was that, uh, now, to put this all into context, I was having a discussion with a brother-in-law and... You know, he was sort of upset because I wasn't, um, I don't vote. I never have and I never will because the system is corrupt. Even before I came into the truth, I knew that, okay? And this was spiritual. I, I, would, I would go so far as to say that the Heavenly Father, you know, had already put this in me, all right? The wisdom, let's say that, in me to know that um, politics are corrupt. It's wicked, all right? It's... Um, it's rigged, and we have no reason to be participating in any aspect of this society or worldly politics, period. Okay? And I knew this from a very, very early age. This is why I've never voted before. Okay? Now, my, my family member went so far as to say, after she heard me talking about this person, or talking to, um, having this conversation... Um, I told them they were both wicked, both Democrats and Republicans. They mean us no good. They're evil. They're wicked. They hate us. All their laws are proof of that because they are anti Hamashiach Yahawashai. Okay? And their laws don't benefit us in any way, shape, or form. Okay? They've always been rigged against us. 
okay and they've always basically shown a hatred towards us okay perfect example um, there's been a law on the books I don't know if it's been for the past year or two but it hasn't passed in the Senate okay it's the lynching law okay uh, they basically propose that uh, lynching be made illegal because it's not it's not illegal it's not a federal crime to lynch people of course murder is but just go figure this is just uh, nothing but confusion in Esau's land of Babylon the Great okay but they passed this anti-hate law amongst the Moabites the so-called Asians or Chinese and Japanese okay they passed that no problem okay in spite of the long-standing history of evil and wickedness and atrocities committed against you Israelites and lynching was what was one aspect of that but guess what they're still not able to pass a law that prohibits lynching against you Negroes Latinos and Native Americans which is proof positive that they hate you Israelites okay and that's not going to change so if they can't pass this law right like like they did for the heathens the, the Moabites right why is it that they passed this law for them but they couldn't pass this law for us all right to sort of combat hatred and atrocities against our people well it's because they don't care right and that's that's proof so why in the hell would anybody in their right frame of mind be linked up with a system that won't be um, won't create laws to keep you from getting hung from a goddamn tree you see and and you know you point that out to these people and they just it goes in one ear and out the other they don't care you know they like being Americans they love this political system they love voting they want to feel like they're important they want to feel like they're they're true Americans they, they want to feel like they're as equally important and have a voice just like the Edomite okay not knowing that they hate your guts okay they don't want to see you succeed they want to continue seeing you oppressed they want to see you sad they want to see you miserable they want to see you downtrodden they want to keep that upper hand of superiority at all times okay if they didn't they'd be out there lobbying for you Israelites to be on a, an equal playing field right Okay, now I don't want to go into the rabbit hole of politics because uh, I'm going to save that for another lesson. Okay, but you know that's basically going to be about you Israelites um, voting. Okay, and how you shouldn't be, and that's a commandment. You should not be voting in these this wicked, evil system that oppresses your people. You're basically signing off on your own oppression. All right, and this is why so many of you niggas are depressed and, and c killing yourselves. Okay because you have the mindset of the typical Egyptian okay the spiritual Egyptian or the Edomite you want to be a part of this but this is not your rest and this is why you're miserable this is why you're depressed this is why you're unhappy okay <coughs> so lock you but you'll get it you'll get it when it's too late and that's on you I don't care anymore okay to hell with you to hell with you all alright next scripture let's go to the book of Isaiah real fast because for all you pork chop eating Christians that proclaim you love the Lord all right the Heavenly Father is not again he's, he's against you okay he's against you for eating abominable foods among other things for behold this is Isaiah chapter 66 verse 15 for behold the Lord will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire for by fire, Salakia, let me jump down to 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together. Okay, so you niggas who are dining on swine's flesh, the pork chops, the roast pork, the bacon. Okay, I had another uh, uh, dispute with this family member who was offering you know swine to my kids and I said don't you dare all right buy them turkey bacon <clears throat> or beef bacon or chicken bacon all right or don't give them bacon at all okay and I was serious about that 
okay because these niggas seem to think that it's okay to eat whatever the hell they want because the laws are done away with but they're going to be sadly mistaken and rudely awakened when the Heavenly Father comes back through his only begotten son all right to judge this place all right let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah 60, 65 verse 5 okay let's start at 4 which remain among the graves and lodge and the monuments which each eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels okay rabbit stew all right crocodile soup jambalaya shrimp jambalaya and all that bullshit okay all that food that they're, no, they're not supposed to be eating but they eat it anyway because it tastes good and the laws have been done away with in their mind according to Christianity which say stand by thyself come not near me for I am holier than thou I'm holier than you okay in spite of the fact that I eat abominable things I celebrate Christmas okay I'm holier than you you wicked Israelites okay who are following the holy scriptures okay we are holier than all of you because we are Christians okay Christianity is the true religion of the holy scriptures all right and this is what they're, this is the mindset of the typical Christian this is the mindset of my family members okay who still follow white Jesus the Heavenly Father says these are a smoke in my nose a fire that burneth all day all right behold it is written before me I will not keep silence but will recompense even recompense in their bosom your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together okay so their iniquities is this okay they're eating swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things and worshiping of idols okay following the ways of the heathen okay and this is how the Heavenly Father is going to recompense these Israelites who seem to think that they're saved okay they already they, they arrogantly say that they're already saved right well they're in store for a rude awakening Jack okay which leads me to my last precept here Revelation chapter 22 verse 11 he that is unjust let him be unjust still okay you want to be wicked stay that way and he which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still those of you who are still fearing the Lord okay believing in his only begotten son all right trying to walk in the ways of the the only begotten son by following the law statutes and commandments right and the view in the eyes of the Lord the view of the Lord okay we're righteous okay now granted our righteous righteousness are as filthy rags but nonetheless the Heavenly Father is going to view us as righteous because he's judging us by intent our intent Okay, our intent to do good and not do evil. You don't want to do evil when you're born of the Holy Spirit. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Okay, so we are trying to separate ourselves from this wicked and evil world by trying to be holy. Okay, and that entails following the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. Because we know we're not saved by the law. None of us are saved by the law. We're saved through grace. Okay, through faith. All right. We are saved by grace through faith. Alright? In Hamashiach Yahawashai. We're covered by the blood of Yahawashai's sacrifice. Okay? That's a sacrifice that we are we still not worthy of. Okay? But he did it anyway. Okay? So anyway, with that said, this actually went a little longer than I intended, but um, this has been I've been chomping at the bit all week to do this. I didn't want to do it on the fly. I wanted to do it when I came back. And I uh, was able to pull up the precepts on the computer because I had a lot of them to talk about. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I hope this was edifying. Lord's will it was. Uh, till next time, I want to say all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahah Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.